is presumably if Riley Knight's managed, he plays next week. That's the plan. Yeah. So he's uh, he's gone out for management. He's a he's a high work rate player, and he's come in and um, off a limited pre-season um, with ankle surgery, and come in and his work rate's been through the roof for the first couple of weeks. Uh, he's been back. So purely management and. He's in our emergencies because if something did happen and we needed him to come in, he'd play. Um, so yeah, he should be right for, to go next week. So there's talk was a bit more than just management. The talk was a bit of a soft tissue sort of action. Is that incorrect? Yeah, incorrect. No, he's fine. He's uh, it is purely management. Now players don't like to miss by being managed, but uh, it's in the betterment for him. We think he's in our best side going forward, and we'd like to have him for a, for a long time. Um, so it was probably uh, yeah, just didn't want to risk him, I guess, and make sure he's okay. This is definitely no hamstring. Cause it's been talked about. Yeah, no hamstring. No, it looks like it'll be one week. He was pretty keen to push it this week um, to play, but uh, again, we decided to go conservative with him, but uh, he should be available along with Nida for the um, showdown. They said bottom up with injuries this year, they just sort of keep hampering and get the mm. change the way that individually he goes about things perhaps for the next few weeks? Uh, we probably have all pre-season, to be honest, because of uh, what he's come back with his foot, um, the injury he had there with the plantar fascia. So he had to be managed in certain ways. Um, is that an ongoing thing because of... of that maybe, but um, yeah, so he'll be managed like everyone. Um, they'll be managed if they pull up a bit sore, they'll, they might come out of training here and there. And if required, um, some of them will be managed out of a game. I was going to say, did you benefit at times like, um, say, perhaps when we're playing in round two or whenever it was, and came back and give him a couple extra? Uh, in the perfect world, you'd probably say yes. Um, but he was right to play, and probably because of other injuries, he was, um, as the skipper, putting his hand up and saying, Put me in there. So, um, Ideally, maybe, but uh, it is what it is, and um, he'll, be, he'll be right to go next week. So, Ben, the two big guns, Walker and Sloan, mm. do you think they'll both be available for the showdown? Yeah, well, speaking to Rory today, he's dirty on missing this week, um, so there, they should be able to both come back in. That's purely, you've been talking with Sloan about making sure that he's like. Yeah, it was a management thing. We decided a few weeks ago to actually get him back to 100%, not 90, not 85, not 95, but make sure he's right to go because he's so important to our side. Um, and when he comes back in, we want him to stay back in for the rest of the year. So we just didn't want to risk him coming in, hurting it again, going in and out. So more for continuity for him. Those good ones say to play the comp leave and, and they will beat Carlton. They've lost Kerno and Marshbank as well. Um, what's the club's attitude towards tomorrow night's game? Obviously, with no three and four points. Uh, the attitude is to go out there and prepare and perform like we have the last couple of weeks. Um, we can't afford to, to rest on any laurels. It doesn't matter who you're playing. I think if you look at Carlton, which we've done closely, they've been in games. Um, their best is good enough. Um, they've probably had a little bit of trouble sustaining that for a full four-quarter effort, but they've been around the mark. Um, so if we're lax in any area, be it contested ball, be it the way we defend, be it the way we move the ball, um, we'll get found out. Like, uh, I mean, the season's that close, as you've noticed. So. We go in preparing like we would. Uh, we want to win the game, um, but it'll be a hard, hard task for us. Well, yeah, the, the players in the mental space there for a game like that. Over I mean, two weeks ago, you're really up and about for the Swans game. Obviously, the target win over there, really mm. strong position. Carl, not so much on your home deck. How do you get the players in the same mental space as they were two weeks ago? Yeah, well, it's about focusing on what we can control. I know you hear that all the time, but we go in with a game plan and, and there's, there's certain ways that the Crows want to play football um, and that's what we focus on. So how well we can do that, and it doesn't matter who you come up against, it's um, putting out your performance the same way every week. So that's the way we'll go about it and hopefully it gets on our terms early. So it's not a matter of whacking the tackle bags <laughs> you don't have to change anything like that. No, no, not at all. Um, we probably did that in the early 90s a bit, but not so much now. They're, they're pretty switched on. They know how we want to play the game, and um, they know they've got to bring their effort um, no matter what time of the game it is and, and who you're up against. So 
we'll be expecting a pretty ferocious start. How's Keithy going? Keithy's getting there. Yeah, he joined back on the track this week. So he's had some issues with that foot. Um, he, I'm not sure if it's next week. I think we're going to give him a couple of week um, training block just to get him up and about so he's back in the swing of things and hopefully he'll only be two or three away. Brody Smith running around now. What's the latest um, scenario with him on a possible return date? He looks good. I'll keep asking as well. Um, no, he, he, look, he, he looks great. He's... he's um, rehab's gone really well, um, and he's ticking all the boxes. But he's on schedule, so he's not above schedule or you know coming back prior. So he should be around about August. We're thinking um, at some stage in August, but looking really good, ticking all the boxes. I like it when he ices his wrong knee, which means it's not uh, not hurting him too much. But uh, yeah, he's on track. But the plan will be the same. Where's he up to now with his training? Well, he's joining in a bit more ball work now. Um, not so much with the main group. He'll do a few little things. With the, with the main group, but it's more off to the side. Uh, and I, th I think his next step is just that change of direction um, work and his, ability, and his agility work. Um, but as far as his kicking, etc., he looks pretty good. Ideal scenario, you get him back a couple of weeks before the finals? That'd be ideal. I think you'd love uh, anyone who comes off of a long term injury, you'd love to get them a, a good chunk of training plus a, a good couple of games. Um, it can be a difficult thing, so fingers crossed, that's, that's ideal, but um, we'll see how it pans out. Yeah, that's that's what he's aiming for, yeah. and I think that's what the club's aiming for. Now we know with knees things can happen; they can go left, right, and centre. So we'll um, we'll keep assessing it, but that looks like it's on track. How impressed have you been with Bryce Gibson's efforts so far this year? It's been a pretty good nick. Is, is that kind of what you expected with him coming in, or has he been above what you perhaps expected of him? No, I think it's probably what you expect from a guy who's played so much footy, um, a really mature guy, and played some good footy, not just played footy but played some good footy um, at another club. So it's always a difficult thing to come in as a, a new player, whether you've played 200 games or, or 10 games, and, and pick up what a new group are doing and how they play with one another. But I think he's been able to do that really well. Um, and I think there's another level for him to go as well. Um, so we've been really pleased. Given Sloaney, Matt Crouch, and the midfield centre would get banged up, how valuable is he back in the engine room? Yeah, he's been fantastic. His ability to win the footy um, and get it going our way and pick up on our game style pretty quickly um, it's been invaluable. The other thing about him is he, he can kick goals. So he goes forward. He's not just a threat around stoppage, but he can go forward and kick goals, which he's done a few times. There's a bit of extra motivation for him, obviously, against his old side for the first time, do you think? Yeah, I think there would be. Um, you always like to perform against your old side. So well, he'll be pretty keen. But uh, knowing him and seeing him today, I think he'll just go about business as usual. Um, he can probably expect a little bit of heat coming his way, um, but he'll be ready for that. Um, so, yeah, very exciting for him. Yeah, two pretty important players for them. Uh, we think we match up pretty well with Cripps in through the middle, and we've got some big bodies, um, Ellis Yolman and, and Hugh Greenwood, who, who can body up pretty well against them. Um, and if Simpson gets off the chain, he's one that you, we've got some plans in to maybe look after how he uses the footy or where he's getting his ball. So. Um, they're two we have to keep an eye on, but it's not just them. They've got some, some pretty handy players. If Casbolt keeps marking the footy, then he's dangerous for them. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting, but they've, they've certainly got the talent. We just have to be on our game. Physically, one of probably most of us been investing in this is Cam Alexiano. Is Cam got a bit of a slightly different role this week, given he might be on it ever? Yeah, it, won't, it wouldn't be a different role, because I think he's done a similar role the last few weeks. Even Sydney against Kennedy, um, at times, he bodied up against Kennedy at the stoppage. So it'll be similar to that, I'd imagine. Cripps is a pretty dynamic player through those stoppages, so um, you need someone to be able to match him. And I think having Hugh Greenwood there as well, who's pretty good around the stoppage, um, gives us a couple of, couple of players we can go to. Mark, uh, the last couple of guys, Greeny and Cameron, obviously, you don't have played a bit of stack of AFL football between them for different reasons. Mm. You must have sort of been able to turn to them such a big job. Yeah, and they're, they're relishing the challenges, to be honest. They, um, it's great to actually have them play, but play together for a long period of time. So long being five or six weeks. Um, you know, get them in there. They can work off each other. They understand how how they both play and, and what the, the midfield looks like. So, as was mentioned earlier, with regards to some of the injuries we've had through the midfield, it's been great for them. So at least you've got a real lot of confidence now going to those two to, to play those roles. Uh, yeah, Jez McGovern putting off contract talks till the end of the year at West Coast. One at each end for Adelaide would obviously be ideal. Do you just say to Mitch, get him on the phone and 
that the process here? I just spoke to Mitch before. <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice to, it would be nice, wouldn't it? But no, look, I think he's pretty comfortable in Perth, but uh, look, you never know. Um, but having a couple of brothers, it was going the other way last year, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. When Jeremy was meant to be calling Mitch, so we'll see if we can reverse the, reverse the table. Well, we got